Hey, what is up, YouTube? We are continuing the card review for Murder of Castle Nathria. We are going, moving on to Priest here. So let's get, oh, we're getting into Rogue here, actually. So the first one we have here is Double Cross. Rogue has a lot of good standalone cards, and they have a lot of just come, some of these weird secret stuff. So we're going to start off with all the secrets here, because they, that is the order that they are on the website based off of reveal date. So... This one is double cross, two mana secret. When your opponent spends all their mana, draw two cards. So, I mean, this is going to go off. This is very good because you're going to, you, you, you spend your mana in arena. That's how it works, right? So <laughs> they might not trigger it immediately, but there's a, I guess there's a chance that maybe they don't spend their mana and then they kind of eliminate the other options and they figure out it's this and then maybe they can never trigger it. There is a chance, but most of the time, I mean, especially if you play this early, like it's going to go off. People are going to have to, you can't just not spend your mana in Arena. If you get, if you play this and then your opponent never spends all of their mana, then, and they're doing it because they're playing around this, that's probably worth the card anyway, right? Just out of the tempo gain you get out of that. But yeah, usually you're just going to get card draws off of this not instantly so it's not as good as two man draw two but it's usually pretty good and any secret people might get scared of other secrets and it might get more value that way so it's this is a very good secret next up we have kidnap which is a epic secret two mana after your opponent plays a minion stuff it into a zero four stack sack which i believe that goes onto your board and then they have to kill it they have to deal four damage to the sack so this is a weird one because, I mean, if you're completely off, if you force your opponent completely off board, which Rogue is pretty good at doing a lot of the time, then you might not, they might not be able to deal with this. You might just automatically, they might just not be able to deal with this. But if you're behind, this will do literally nothing because your opponent, I mean, it saves you four health, I guess, because they'll have to kill this, but then it'll do nothing. And sometimes maybe your opponent will have to use removal on it and then it'll just like trade for a removal. So this is a very kind of high variance card. It's going to be very good and very useless and in kind of anywhere in between, basically. Oh, that is true. This goes, this puts the minion back to their hand. Oh, wait, that's actually much better then. So it's even then it's still just a sap. Oh, oh, well, that's actually good. The only issue is, is that that could also be a problem because you can give them the same battle cry twice. So sometimes that's going to be actively bad. <laughs> I can actually be really bad, if, especially if they know, if they were to expect it, but it's an epic, so you need to do that. But, okay, that makes it better that they don't get the minion, they have to actually play it again most of the time, right? So yeah, I guess it's pretty good, usually, but yeah, it's like you're also giving your opponent a shadow step sometimes. <laughs> That's very risky then, because this can just lose you games, but it can also be very good. The first battle cry likely won't trigger. I think that's completely, I don't think that's true because you're after your opponent plays a minion. After, battle cries happen before you summon a minion. So there's, I think there's like no way that's true. Yeah, it's like risky, right? But it's very, it could be very hit or miss basically. I don't know, let's just move on. It's an epic so you won't even be offered it too much but it's probably worth picking most of the time. Cause like what you would want to do, you probably would just want to play this, like, you know, play it in the early to mid game and then you just it is basically a sap that adds you a zero four now it's like it, it should be very good i would say like probably you don't want to be super greedy you probably just want to use it earlier just to guarantee that it doesn't go wrong that's what i would say personally rather than trying to go for a uh, much better one because people can play around it Next one is Sticky Situation, two mana secret after your opponent casts a spell, summon a 3-4 spider with stealth. So this is basically a reprint of Cat Trick, which was the same exact text in Hunter, except it was a 4-2 beast with stealth instead of this 3-4 beast with stealth. That is also true, you get infused off of this. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> but overall, yeah, like... So Cat Trick wasn't very good because a lot of times your opponent just wouldn't have spells. That was the issue. And this is the same problem, obviously. Um, a 3-4 with stealth sometimes it's better than a 4-2, sometimes it's not. <laughs> it's honestly probably about the same. And Cat Trick was not a super good card, so this is like... It's not terrible. There's probably going to be more spells in Arena nowadays. So it's probably better than Cat Trick was, I want to say. 
That is true. The zero four is bad for the seven drop infuse. But yeah, like this is not unpickable. Like you're gonna get the spider eventually, and it has stealth. It's not just like stealth for one turn. So if it's gonna, if you get it later and it's gonna get value trade, you just don't unstealth it, right? So it's you know it's useful. Next up we have Private Eye. Four mana, three four. Valkyrie cast Seek from your deck. Combo cast two instead. This requires you to draft a whole bunch of those secrets, and those secrets were. There's a fair chance that they will bring back a set that has more rogue secrets in it. They might not, but they might. Um, but this one's a common. That's a very good one. This one's an epic. That one is hit or miss, and this one's also a common. So there's you have two common secrets to potentially pull from. And, I mean, frankly, even if you just pull one, it's very good. Because it also means you don't have to draw and spend the mana on the secret. So just getting one secret is already pretty pretty good. And if you get two, it's insane. So that's just not going to happen very often because it requires you to have two secrets in your deck. Also requires you to not have drawn them already. Also requires you to combo this thing. So you're not going to get that too much, but you really don't need to. This card's just good by itself. And you're probably just going to end up having a secret anyway, based off of the ones we've seen. You're probably going to have at least one to pull. So as long as you just don't draw it before you play this, then it's pretty good. So... It's a good card. Assuming you have the secret, obviously, if you're pick 25 and you don't have any secrets, do not pick this. But otherwise, pretty good. Next one we have here is Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes. 4 mana, 5, 4, Elemental, Death Rattle. If you control a secret, store Hawkeyes' soul inside of it. It resummons Hawkeyes when triggered. So, potentially you can play this on turn 6 and combo it. And then you get two 5, 4s eventually four mana very good but i mean worst case scenario this is a four mana five four and there's like it's a death rattle there can be some death rattle synergy you get theoretically you actually if you were to have a secret and smoke screen then you could get this into that secret as well no it triggers a death rattle yeah so that does work right interesting yeah so you could even like cheat it out with smoke screen so legendary, you might have a secret or two. A lot of times it's just going to be a four mana five four, which means you probably have better legendary options, frankly. But, you know, if you have the synergy, go for it, right? It's going to be good sometimes. I guess it makes it like a four star legendary. Next up, we have Serrated Bone Spike. This is two mana deal three damage to a minion. Cannot go face, but deal three damage to a minion. If it dies, your next turn this card, your next card this turn costs two less. So basically it's like a new, much better backstab. Unlike backstab, where you have to hit undamaged minions, this can kill, this can hit damaged minions. Not only that, you might want to use undamaged minions because you want to kill things off. It's generally how you want to use removal anyway, right? So, and it's then your next card is not even like your next spell. So it's effectively zero mana deal three to a minion, which is just pretty much, I mean, well, you know, I mean, it's like, it's basically just as good as zero mana deal three. It's just, it's just very good. It does indeed also let you prep a minion. It lets you essentially prep a minion so you can play this. Well, you would have to like prep this, but you wouldn't have prep in arena. But yeah, you could theoretically prep this and then on six mana or something, you could play prep, play this, and then play an eight mana minion on turn six, which would be very cool, but not gonna be doing that in arena very often it could matter if you uh what's more likely is that you might actually reduce the cost of this and then you could actually you know essentially prep a minion that way so that could happen there's a lot of things this is just basically just a way better backstab so it's just very very good probably like either a strong four star probably a, i guess like a strong four star card next up we have ghastly grave digger so three mana four three bow cry if you ch control a secret choose a card in your opponent's hand to shuffle into your into their deck so well that's very good three mana four three is a three mana four three is not very good so you do want to have a secret but if you again like probably gonna end up having a secret or two in your deck it's a lot of upside so most of the time, I mean, you're not going to have enough secrets to make this consistent ever, though. So it's more like a mid to late game combo piece a lot of the time. Although you could conceivably, some of these secrets might not go off and then you could conceivably just play secret into this. And then it's like, just, and then it's pretty unfair. 
you could potentially deny their curve play even and then you just instantly win um it's gonna be like honestly i mean you'll probably take it just because it's worth the upside you'll take this over a lot of things just because it can just win you a game and it's never bad so yeah it's a good card talking about good cards the next one we have is necroloid draka four mana three four bow cry equip a one three dagger gain plus one attack it's plus one attack to the uh dagger right a four mana three four that equips a one three yeah like even that's not bad and in arena typically i mean you're not going to realistically <laughs> buff this too much but you get even one or two buffs on this that becomes very good so not gonna be as good as in constructed you can probably pretty easily get like six attack on the dagger potentially but on a like in a mid game turn which makes it like crazy but you're not going to do that in arena very often but yeah it's you're going to get you can pretty easily in the mid game get enough to attack on your dagger that it's decent yeah and that's a big thing is that you can just on coin it's crazy because you just get a two three on turn three and that's very good so yeah like it's pretty good it's not gonna like realistically when you the game all that often by itself but yeah it's it's good it's like always going to be at least decent it's not pretty good next one we have here is sinstone graveyard two mana location card with two durability summon a one one stealth ghost which has plus one plus one for each other card you played this turn you get like this is kind of more of a constructed card unlike a lot of the locations this one you are not really ever going to use i mean i guess if you play it on a later turn you could use it immediately because it, it would count itself and it's a two mana card so you could use it in the mid game mid to late game immediately then you get a big stealth a decent sized stealth pretty good but the one thing is is that it's not going to be really good on curve you probably wouldn't even keep this in your opening hand i don't know eh, maybe you would you just wouldn't use it immediately you play it on turn two and you just wouldn't use it i don't know it's like it's hard to i don't know i don't think you would even keep it because it's it doesn't count itself oh it does say for other cards so i guess it wouldn't count itself so yeah it's like it's weird you have to like play it and then i don't know it's like a little weird you have to play it wait then and then later on you're going to get decent value out of it but it's like it's just slow right you do get value over time but it's just yeah it's just like a slow card that's not going to have like the hugest impact it's a lot of con it's a lot of it's a lot of setup for just not that much upside basically yeah in constructed it's absolutely insane because you can just pop off like crazy with it right get giant stealth minions but in arena like you're just not realistically going to do that it's still like pickable like it's not a bad card in arena but it's just not that good because yeah like on curve like it's just it's not worth it you have to like use it in the late game and it's just yeah it's not enough upside I think it's pickable because it's like a decent I mean it's just not a it's just not a curve play you just play it later on but it does a lot more in the later game than any it's just like an okay mid-range play mid game play mid to late game play but it's not great though you still get a lot of stats for two mana eventually it's just next up you have door of shadows this is a one mana rare shadow spell draw a spell infuse two add a temporary copy of it to your hand so i believe temporary copy means it's a card that lasts until the end of your turn right so you just play the copy in that case um you can even i mean if you want to you can just play this on turn one and just replace it to just try to get something but also i mean you can if you have reconnaissance or some other cheap spell you want you could even just you know pull out a secret and then play the secret immediately and then you get another copy of it which is less good because they know what it is at that point but yeah i mean a lot of times this is just going to be one mana and draw two spells which is very good so i think getting a copy is usually worse but certain spells you might want copies of so it could be very good you get a copy of blood in the water or something very very good so pretty good so overall pretty good set for uh rogue i think looks like shaman is next so we're gonna go move on to that thanks a lot for hanging out everyone on youtube and in twitch as well we we'll see you guys in the next one